Hi, y'all. I'm Gray Goo Girl, and uh, as, as mentioned, this is uh, Metroid Planets. Um, I'm joined with uh, joined by Josie. Uh, say hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Joe Josie. <laughs> nice to be here. I'm a Metroid enthusiast, let's say. <laughs> so for those of you who are unfamiliar with Metroid Planets, it's a fan game that was made uh, over a couple of years. Uh, and the goal of Metroid Planets was to create a really good, uh, b- a better version of the experience for, for original Metroid. Uh, they ended up building a system called Enigma. And that's what we're going to be showing off today. Enigma is a set of randomly generated planets based off of rooms that other people create. So uh, this is a collection of rooms that are from certain uh, certain other events, things that are a different uh, collection of rooms from people that I, I know quite well, and a few special ones that are thrown in the mix for this particular marathon. So uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, I think we're pretty much good to go. Uh, Josie, when you do a countdown for me. Sure, I got you. Let's start in three, two, one, go. We got our first custom room of the event. Fun little landing page, a landing area just for us. <laughs> the Frost 2024 Enigma. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, so one of the first big things you're going to see is this, uh, the animations of this are a lot more smooth than you would normally see in the original Metroid. Uh, okay. Just by, you know, by, uh, <laughs> sorry. Just because the uh, the system they're using is just so much more advanced than what the NES could do. I appreciate the eyeball room so early. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what uh, upgrades are we are you expecting to be able to get in this uh, version of Metroid? So the upgrades tend to stay close to what the original game had. There are some special ones that were added in that were from Super Metroid. So we have our standard uh, long beam, the spacer, which is from Super Metroid. We have ice beam, uh, and we have wave beam uh, for, the, for the gun upgrades. For movement upgrades, we have high jump. We have uh, space jump, which is also brought in from Super Metroid, uh, and screw attack, along with spring ball, which is another Super Metroid carryover. And we also uh, have bosses upgrade- in this, right? Oh, do I get oh, go it? ahead. As I say, um, <laughs> <laughs> do. Um, so we have uh, our several upgrades as well as some bosses to beat, right? Yes. So there are all total four bosses in this game. Uh, there are the originals from, from Metroid, along with a special one from Super Metroid, which is Spore Spawn, uh, who we will definitely see. Uh, this seed is set up for all four bosses to be uh, available. So we're going to work with that. Uh, yes, yeah, so there are all total uh, six areas that we're going to see. Uh, there could possibly have been seven, but for, you know, length and all of that, it just made sense to do a bit of a shorter run. Yeah. So it takes these rooms that people have made and just sort of randomly assembles them into a randomizer, essentially? Yeah, so every room is assigned a series of tags. They're also assigned a series of um, just different different things about them. Like, these are most of these rooms are designed to be in criteria or, one, or they're specific to a, uh, a different... Uh, area, as it were. Uh, the areas we're, we're going to see are... We're definitely going to see Kraid. We're going to see Ridley. Um, we're going to see Torian and Criteria. We should see Brinstar. I don't know if one of those areas might be swapped out for uh, Wrecked Ship. Uh, which is, a, again, a carryover from Super Metroid. So right now, what are we on? A Morph Ball hunt, like usual? Oh, it's a hot room. <laughs> yep, we're starting off looking for Morph Ball, and rather than dying here, I'm just going to go and do a respawn back at the ship. Uh, they were kind enough to build this feature in. We can respawn right back at the main ship with all the stuff we found. How exciting. Super nice. Very convenient for, for getting around uh, some of the early uh, checks and stuff. Especially if you get like really far away from somewhere. <laughs> uh, there's our morph ball. Hey! Yeah. Good, we're not going to spend <laughs> half the seed looking for a morph ball. <laughs> yeah, it's typically pretty quick where it gets to you. There's, there are a lot of rooms that just require morph ball by default. Uh, everyone treats it very similarly to stock Metroid, where it expects you're going to have morph ball, like, right away. Those more misses. So I will preface this as well by saying I don't know all of these rooms. There are a total of, in just the collection that I have for this game, a total of about 3,000 rooms. Because we're excluding Wrecked Ship, only about 2,600 of them could show up. I haven't seen all 2,600 of them. I know <laughs> most of them. I know the themes around them. I know the designers who made them. But not necessarily the ability to see all of the, uh, the rooms directly. 
Ooh, Surge Core. To get a good way to a good segue into uh, what, the core system in this. So cores were a thing that were added to give some variety to larger worlds. Um, what they do is they give you special benefits, bonuses. Um, in this case, the Surge Core. Uh, well, I'll put that on right now just to sort of show it off. Uh, the Surge Core does is basically rapid fire, uh, but it slows down after a couple seconds. So the longer I hold it, the slower it fires. That also saves on spamming. It's one of the reasons why I love that particular core more than any of them. <laughs> you save your fingers a little? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I, I compulsively tap buttons when I'm running stuff. So, like, if, if anyone was, was seeing my inputs, it would just constantly be pushing <laughs> buttons. So there's no, like, wall jump in this. It's it's original Metroid tech, which is uh, a little more... A little more chill than um, you would see in something like, say, Super Metroid, where uh, there's a lot of movement tech. Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, the movement tech in this is a lot more relaxed. Uh, there are very few little pieces of actual movement tech. Um, the only one from the original game that I think still exists is uh, the ability to spring ball after you... Basically, infinite coyote frames on spring ball. Or on, uh, oh. on morph ball and unmorphing and jumping. It's a whole big thing. It's not used anywhere. Uh, room designers are encouraged to not build tricks into their rooms just because it, we can't really build it into the logic to, to do routing. So someone might run into that and not know how to do the trick and get stuck. Gotcha. Well, so, yeah, so it, assumes in... the, it assumes the lowest knowledge level for, for generation. Ooh. Okay, well, so the... that was a hot room. This area is... I don't think North is where we want to be right now. Yeah, I have a feeling uh, Ridley isn't exactly our uh, cup of tea at the moment. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Although I will say the bosses in this are substantially easier than Super Metroid. As, uh, as y'all may or may not know, I do a lot of Super Metroid runs. I've run Super Metroid past in, in uh, Patal's events. And uh, yeah, the bosses in this, infinitely easier. Uh, since they were also infinitely easier in the original Metroid. Yeah, as so I remember, the, in the original Metroid, you do a lot of, like, face tank and spam missiles to kill bosses. <laughs> yeah, and the, the formula is pretty much the same here. Um, there is one other really awesome thing we can do that you couldn't do in the original in this. You can shoot down. Ooh. <laughs> I know, like, by, by today's standards, that's like, what that, that shouldn't be impressive, but it's, it's nice. It's super nice. Yeah, it means you need, don't need bombs to go down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to check out more criteria. Uh, there's just so much more of this area to check out. Um, although, I don't know if I activated the map. I didn't activate the map. I should probably get through that. Kind of just blazed right on by that. So yeah. this is another fun thing they added into this game. This is a full-on map system with a map scanner. So when you do find a map area, you can just scan an area, and it will show you what's under that section of the map. Oh, that's really cool. I suppose just giving you the whole map. Yeah, exactly, because if you gave me the whole map, it wouldn't be a challenge, but having these little sections fill in, it's kind of nice. And then every 15 minutes, you get a new a new scan for that. You can get up to three scans in all total. Ah, the first one of our special rooms. Ma'am? Ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> the ma'am drop. Woo! <laughs> 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 nice little fun reference for uh, some of the other, uh, other events. <laughs> There are a couple more of those that'll be hidden throughout the uh, throughout the run. Um, we should see them. I don't know that they're in here, but I did favor having my rooms be part of the generation, so they should be. Down here. Uh, also, if we have any donations, we can probably do a couple right now. Absolutely. We still have plenty of... Uh... Waluigi uh, support and enthusiasm. And of course, that two for one Taco Tuesday incentive is still open. We're close to 1200 out of 1500 for that. We have $25 here from Roger the Homunculus who says, We have wackos on Wacko Wednesday. No, wait. It's twos wah. Um, I can't <laughs> stop now. Send help, send donations. Very, very astute of you, Roger. Thank you so much for that generous donation. We also have $6 here from B and Ivy simply saying, let's go. I couldn't agree more. So does the... Uh... Sorry, good. Oh, so does the room ran randomizer uh, thingy expect you to uh, do hot rooms to like, like do hack runs? 
Yes, I set this up to include that. So we do have uh, what is called a loud hazard. So it will not force us to do hazard runs, but they are allowed in the generation. Gotcha. Um, you, you can set it to not allowed, allowed, or forced. Right, so given what we found down there, that was what they call a high security vault way. Um, we are not going to touch that. High security vaults are... Okay, we're, we're at one hit point. I'm just going just gonna to take the L and pop back to the, uh, the elevator. Because, you know, full health. Who might argue about that? Uh, we're going to actually go back up. There's a couple things we didn't check off criteria, and we've only found, uh, what was it, long beam and more fall up there. Uh, so the distribution, there's, pr there's a good chance there's probably another item up in Criteria. So we're going to check that out. Again, so there's no like hard rule as to where things are going to populate in, because that would make it less challenging and interesting. But a good rule of thumb is to say uh, that an area will most likely have two to three uh, items in it. Typically two to three major items. Uh, Major items include the, the powers we mentioned before, uh, the ship core, or the uh, suit cores, all that kind of stuff. Um, suit cores, I think, are actually they're considered extra, so you're not really counting them as part of that total, but yeah. Major items that are part of progression we found typically two or three in an area. So what are we hoping to see here? Are there high jump boots in this? Yeah, high jump boots are definitely on the list. Um, I would love to see high jump. I'd love to see uh, bomb. Bomb is usually notoriously hard to find and uh, has a tendency to block a lot of things. <laughs> it's one of those ones that just kind of gets in the way and it's just like, without it, also a lot of the uh, the exit rooms for the escape tend to have bomb spot stuff in it. Oh yeah. Uh, people build a lot of challenge rooms in Torian, specifically like, you know, requiring you to have certain items to get through them just to make sure you can't leave too early. Um, okay, that's a spring ball check, which... Not a thing we have. Uh, we're gonna teleport back. Yeah, so I'll mark that as well. You can actually... The, one of the fun things about this map is you can leave up to 10 markers on the map uh, to tell you what you need for specific rooms. So for this, I can grab spring ball, and now I know I need spring ball for that. Um, that oh, one nice. I did not mark directly, but we got, like, down here we also have another Spring Ball room. So it looks like Spring Ball's probably pretty, pretty high on the list for us to find. So hopefully we'll find that pretty soon. Uh, we've got two checks that are building up right now. Let's check out this, this area over here. I'm gonna guess this is Kraid. Yeah, it's Kraid. Yeah, good guess. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Uh, Kraid being a criteria is pretty pretty common. Uh, we'll most likely find Ridley off of uh, off of Norfair, uh, and then Torian, I believe, will also find off of Criteria. But I'm not 100 percent on that. No, not Criteria. Uh, Brinsar, rather. Brinsar. Do um <clears throat> about what kind of resources do you think we need to take on Kraid himself? I uh, I'd probably want a a few more missiles than this. Uh, somewhere around like 50 is pretty good and. Usually some type of either damage reduction or some type of damage, uh, damage reducing extension like uh, Aegis Core. That's gotcha. always really nice. Uh, extends your iframes by three times. So you can just kind of stand in them and shoot. Right, gonna pop over I, just, here. I just noticed that there's little like sparks of fire coming off of the, uh, the door when you open it to indicate you're going into a hot room. It's so cool. Yeah, it's little touches like that that make this really interesting. All right, so we're running into a lot of hot rooms. I'm going to go check a few things real quick off the criteria. So it looks like there were a couple things we didn't look at up there. I might have to go back and do some of that. I think hey, that's probably a good idea. I think your variant might be in criteria. It's entirely possible. We've run into a lot of hot rooms, so they might give us an early, an early Varia. It might be that just some of the paths off are, uh, have some type of like progression item that will take us to a completely different path. So. Mm -mm. And yeah, uh, the reason I use allowed for this is because then it keeps it from being like just solid hot rooms in one area and gives you yeah. more of that variability because it does expect you to be able to dive through some of them. You get a little bit of a, uh, an unfortunate collection of rooms right here where it's just a long, narrow tunnel attached to a long, narrow tunnel. <laughs> uh, which is 
it kind of reminiscent of the original Metroid. One of the yeah. one of the weakest aspects of the original game. Not to not to cri uh, to criticize what is obviously a legendary game, um, but the level design had left a little to be desired in certain aspects. There was a lot of hidden stuff that wasn't indicated. Uh, there was also certainly a lot of rooms that were very samey to jump through. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of um, of like blue dot rooms you just climb and climb and climb and climb in in uh, the original Metroid. Yeah, they just feel like they go on forever. <laughs> Occasionally you okay, see one enemy and you're here. like, ooh. <laughs> as we're gonna pop back up here, we're gonna pop by the ship so we grab that as a uh, as a spawn point. So we are set to this spawn point now. Now when we do the uh, the respawn, it'll drop us right here. Yeah, the, the original Metroid, there are things I love about that game. There are also things that I I really wish would have been a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> um, they definitely seem to learn from their mistakes on that one because uh, Metroid 2 had a lot better designed rooms. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There was a lot more to explore. There was a little bit... There were a couple things that were really kind of buried, but at the same time, they, uh, they definitely learned from their mistakes in certain, in certain aspects. Okay, so what is this? Oh, nice. Uh, this thing. requires a wave beam, so we're gonna mark that. Oh, I see, because there's a blue gate. <laughs> yep, blue gate's on the other side of the door. We can only hit it by shooting through that door. Uh, this Actually, the health we've gotten in the, the last couple of rooms has been very useful at this point. I have a feeling you we'll know be seeing more health. some of those hell runs a little bit easier. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. Right, so we're going to head over to uh, Four Corners, which is made by the uh, lovely, talented Flannel Cat. Um, there are a lot of a lot of room designers in here, like I said, people that I know. Um, just folks that are really interesting uh, interesting designers. Uh, specifically, folks like Amata-chan, Scrunt, um, just a couple others. Whose names evade me for the moment. Uh, but if you are interested in seeing who made a room, in the bottom left corner it will always show the name of the room and the person who made it. We're gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna wait for that. Normally, what I would do here is I would do a, a damage boost to get up to that corner, which you're not supposed to do. It's not technically in logic, but I'm not one to stop for what is technically in logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this uh, this is a morph check that I couldn't do earlier. That's why right. I didn't mark it. Okay. See, it's always always beneficial to mark stuff like that. Okay, and this is gonna take us probably to. It's not criteria. It's right ship. No, it's Torian. Torian. Okay. Oh, jeez. Torian's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, okay. You can find items in Torian. Um, it's not always going to have Metroids in the first area. I was going to say, what are the odds of us running into Metroids here? <laughs> if we run into a Metroid, it's pretty much over. I can't get away from them and I can't kill them. So that's we're just going to we're just going to take it that we're we're going to get past this without uh, without too much trouble. <laughs> Hopefully it'll drop us in a hub room that's got uh, an item or two in it. Uh, this would be a decent room that I could possibly get something out of. Well, it's, uh... Ah, get away from spider. spider! I don't like you! <laughs> mean. I don't remember spiders in the original Metroid! <laughs> there were no spiders in the original Metroid! That <laughs> spider's just there because... I, I don't know why. They added a couple <laughs> a couple of mobs that are, are definitely not part of the original cast of creatures, as it were. There's my spring oh, ball. Oh, there's your spring ball. Yep. A, jump, a jumping into Torian is incredibly important early on. Uh, just for that kind of stuff. We get Spring Ball. Uh, mm -hmm. Spring Ball is going to give us access to a couple Spring Checks that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, we're going to avoid these spiders, and I'm just going to keep going in Torian until I run into something that kills me. Oh my god, the little uh, droid. <laughs> yeah, little robots. The ones from Super Metroid. <laughs> They're adorable. <laughs> okay, so there's... I know there's a detonation button for the side of this wall somewhere. Alright, um... Remember there's something more to do with this, uh, but I'm not quite sure. Hey, you. Move. Move yeah. your butt. <laughs> oh, there ah, we go. There's one of the items. Got it. Again, it's just finding where people put stuff. Uh, usually there's indications in this room. I don't seem to see any indication of where stuff is, but you know. Yeah, it's so here. Since, it's somewhere. 
<laughs> Since these are player made rooms, I assume they can get. They could get really trolly if the creator wanted to and just have items hidden in god awful places. More than a few times, I have uh, openly cursed several developers of rooms for <laughs> some of these shenanigans they pull. Um, a certain person made a room, uh, they knew who they are, uh, that takes eight minutes to get through. <laughs> it's just it's just eight minutes of rolling around in Morphal. <laughs> uh, they were nice enough to build in a way that once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again, but it's still kind of not great. <laughs> yes, those are all of the uh, TGIF rooms as they were. The It's a reference to the... Uh, the times that they run the, the weekly events over on the uh, Metro Planets uh, Discord server. So yeah, TGIF rooms are a little mean. Troll rooms are really mean. That's why they are completely filtered. Oh, no. Ooh. No, we're not going there. <laughs> nope, is... going back. <laughs> that is not the right direction. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, someone pointed out this is very, very similar to the idea of like a Mario Maker uh, in that it, it's, it's basically that. People make rooms, they stitch them together. It combines all the things I love about randomizers and all the things I love about the idea of like a, a Mario Maker, where it's like people want to make things that resemble their version or their vision of how a game should have been. And I, I love to, to see people empowered to do that. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a small damage boost off of this Gleamer right here. Uh, so I can see if I can grab this item. I probably don't need to grab the item, but I want to. It's going to be a lot of work uh, for a missile tank. <laughs> No, uh, no. Oh, no. Eh, it's fine. We'll come back for it. I highly doubt it's anything useful. But, uh, uh okay, it's fine. It's gonna be something incredibly useful now. Uh, <laughs> but it's fine. Now that I've said it, I've willed it into existence, it's gonna be like Varia or something. Right, that's where you're at. <laughs> I mean, at least we know it's not high jump boots, because I'll be... Well, you could be locked by ice, I guess. Uh, ice or space jump. Okay, this is not how you're supposed to do this. But I figured out how to do it, so I do it. You're supposed to use bombs. Hey, for a missile. All that worked for nothing. <laughs> well, we're definitely we definitely seem ready for crate if we run into him. Oh yeah, we're we're in good we're in good shape for crate. Um I think we a little more health would be preferable, but I think we're fine. I would also like to get uh, get us a better gun upgrade as well. If we can get wave, that would be very useful. Uh, so now that we know what these needs, that doesn't need that. We know that wave was required for that, so that can't be wave. Uh, we have a spring ball check. Oh, hold on. That's what I was trying to do. We have a spring ball check over here and a spring ball check down there. So we're going to go do the criteria spring ball check. As we, uh, I love, I, the really, some of the, the art on some of these rooms is really nice. Like, it's, it's really oh. cool to see, like, the enhanced graphics, like, really shining. Oh, 100%. You can use something like, uh, I want to say there's 10 separate color palettes for blocks. Uh, there are five animated color palettes for blocks, uh, with, uh, I think a total of 13 max frames. So you can get some really intricately detailed things. People put a lot of effort into their rooms to make them look as good as possible. It's also an excellent outlet for, for other bits of creativity. You'll see you'll see later in some of the rooms, most likely. I don't know if they're in here. Um, but certain people draw like different character things, or they'll they'll make references, do different memes, that kind of stuff in these rooms. Because they can do it. There's enough fidelity there to do that. While we uh, trek back through criteria, got some time for a couple quick donations. Absolutely. Heck yeah, I have $30 here from Dijon Ketchup, who says, as promised, here's my $5 for each retry. I'm glad I got to show off a wonderful game here at Frost Fatales. I'm less glad about the pictures of teeth that it inspired. Please send help <laughs> and tacos. <laughs> And I also have $5 here from Sober Dwarf, who says, Hey, 3G, it's your chat mod here, wishing you best of luck on your run, and hope me watching doesn't curse it like it does all your practice runs. Thank you so much for running this and all your work behind the scenes moderating the chat. One last thing, resist. <laughs> uh, so uh, there was this a reference to, uh, to a thing that I do on my, uh, my personal channel, which is uh... Think about a thing of a gelatinous cube. That's not important. Uh, thank you, Sever. I truly appreciate that. <laughs> so, 
Looks like that was nothing. We have to go back to the other spring ball check that we have. And if that's nothing, we'll have to dive north there. <laughs> I never feel like I have enough energy tanks when I'm hell diving. Like, it just never feels right. <laughs> Doing that so many times in Super Metroid has just made me immune to caring about it. Like, I just don't think about it. I look at my health and I just do it. I, I don't know how to shut my brain off for it, but... <laughs> Just lots of practice. <laughs> Sitting there trying to do health calculus while running somewhere and like getting hit once and going, oh, that's not great. <laughs> <laughs> like with the, a lot of the rooms, like I know exactly how much health I need to get through a specific room based on the items I have. And like once you get enough stuff for like doing a crystal flash like in, uh, in Super Metroid, then it's less, less of a problem. But yeah, it's still, yeah. Uh, there is actually a reference to crystal flash in this game. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, cores you can pick up is called the Crystal Core, where it sacrifices your missile ammo for additional health. So well, after cool. under a certain amount of health, it'll start recharging you by taking your missiles. Oh, this is another spring ball check. Oh, nice. Hey, hey. Hurry up. Let's go. Love that animation. So now we can absolutely just go exploring uh, to our heart's content in uh, Norfair. So we've, we've got some decent stuff at this point. We still need some weapons. Uh, I am now completely confident we can take out Kraid and Ridley. Uh, and probably Spore Spawn as well. Uh, oh, this is... Okay, yeah, so this... I think I have enough stuff to do this? Yeah. So this is the... what they call a high security vault. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a kind of a meme from the community. Hey, oh, bombs. bombs. All right. Take that. So now we've got we've got bombs. That's absolutely incredible. And wave Whoa. beam. Whoa. We hit the jackpot. Excellent. We hit so many well upgrades so quickly. Yeah, <laughs> and we're still, there's still a bunch to find, but yeah, we hit a bunch of them real quick, and that's fantastic. Uh, those vaults tend to tend to be very, uh, very good for that kind of stuff. Uh, well, these zepatites and true to, to Metroid fashion, once they're blown up, they're gone. The very few uh, enemies in this game that's like that. All right, we could use an E tank, but I think right now I'm gonna look for oh, Spore Spawn. Uh, I don't need to look very far. There's Spore Spawn. <laughs> so unlike Super Metroid, we actually fight Spore Spawn. <laughs> yeah, we have to fight Spore Spawn. Oh, this is a nice little basic Spore Spawn. It's not anything super super ridiculous. There are some rooms with Spore Spawn that it gets completely ridiculous. Oh, it's even nice and where it puts them too. That's great. Friendly Spore Spawn. Your friend Spore Spawn. <laughs> yeah, your friendly neighborhood Spore Spawn. Or Spo Spo, as I like to call him. Spo Spo. Spo Spo! Also, uh, I am sorry to anyone who is going to have to listen to this because I am going to hit you shoot wave beam constantly from now on and it makes the most annoying noise. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Gotta love that original early NES buzzing noises that they used for everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, the sound design in this, uh, aside from the, the music, is very true to the original as well. And I do want to make it clear, this is also built from the ground up. Uh, the entire engine was built by the uh, by the team that built, the, built this game, so it was all original. Really nice. I love Spore Spawn's, yeah, like, Twilight Zone music. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's there's definitely some ill intent. You can, you can feel the sinister intent that this plant monster has. <laughs> It's definitely not just some random plant trying to live its own life that you're taking out. <laughs> oh no, it's it's definitely done some 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 bad <laughs> stuff. You can tell. I mean, like that's like all of the mobs that are on uh, on uh, Zevis. Like you know, all of them have done something to deserve what they got. I mean, Metro. This if, if you dive into the story of Metroid, it's it's a story about biological weapons. Everything's a biological weapon. Anything you run across is a biological weapon. So you know. I, I always imagine that things like Spore Spawn or, you know, Botwin or whatever out there is just a biological weapon that you, you're dealing with now. Oh, yeah. And you talk about, like, specifically with, um, 
with the, the major bosses, they're all part of the uh, of pirates. Like, that's just a thing. Uh, people want to wonder how a, uh, you know, how a uh, octopus space ghost became a, a colonel for, uh, for a space pirates. I just said, don't question it. Mm -hmm. Fantoon's gonna do what Fantoon does. Hmm. Well, to my knowledge, a lot of, like, that was that was sort of the, uh, the Chozo's thing, was that they made biological weapons, and then, like, it seems like the pirates are very apt in trying to steal biological weapons, and then Mother Brain's a big computer that controls biological weapons while also being a biological weapon. <laughs> yeah, um, for those of you who might not know from the, uh, the extended lore of this universe that includes a manga that was never translated into English, uh, officially, uh, Mother Brain was made by the Chozo uh, to be a, a sort of defense uh, system for the planet. <laughs> but that's a whole other thing, and like I said, it's, it's technically canonically true, but at the same time, like, it's just not common knowledge, so it's just like, eh. Yeah, I think it was Metroid Prime three that you came across another like big mother brain computer that wasn't it yeah. wasn't evil the chozo loved them some organic technology yeah i mean it, if you go into the further lore of it they created the x parasites and then created the metroids to control the x parasites because the x parasites are out of control and then someone killed all the metroids <laughs> and let loose the x parasites <laughs> Yeah, and so you, release, the you release the apes to get the lizards that you release to get, yeah. <laughs> Forever, it's, it's the whole thing. Oh. One little gripe about designs, designs for a room like this, if you can make me bomb a, bomb a thing, you at least make it to a uh, chain break. Those were always always super nice, rather than having to wait to like, hit every one of them, but, you know. Minor gripes. Well, that's the second time we run into that stop sign. <laughs> yeah, uh, Scrunt's uh, got a bunch of these like little end cap rooms that have nothing in them. Uh, okay. Or oh, the F. F's in chat. F's in chat, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of the reasons why I include a lot of scrum stuff. Because it's, it's got its own sense of humor. It's nice. It's... Okay, we found it. <laughs> hey, we found it! <laughs> <laughs> These sorts of fun little things. It's always nice. Oh, uh, just a prank. Oh, and, There's just nothing, nothing in this room. It's got a lot of stops <laughs> in this one. Yeah, this, this post post failure area is just, like, full of nothing. Lots and lots of nothing. <laughs> I was gonna ask, is that, like, a common thing, or are we getting some, some marathon luck here? We're getting some marathon trolling right now, where it's just, like, all of the rooms that have nothing in them. <laughs> and another one. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> Damn. What the heck? Oh, my God. See, this is Spore Spawn's revenge right here. Oh, yeah, look at this. Everything past Spore Spawn, we found one thing. <laughs> and an item we can't access. Spore Spawn's Which revenge. I'm willing to put money, on, money down right now, but that, uh, that item is probably useful. Uh, we need Ice Beam to get it, or... No, we just need Ice Beam. The only way to get it. So, yeah. we're gonna mark that, as you do. Yeah, we can definitely ice. unmark that. <sighs> Yeah, so I mean, we're we're doing pretty good. We only got what two more, three more bosses to clear. Uh, we'll find some more items as they come. So like having a Varia suit really opens up a lot of stuff. Having bombs also very very important. And spring ball. So we're, we're basically in order to go full go mode, I need all of the items, but except for screw attack, you don't really need screw attack. No one needs screw attack. It's just a nice to have. Yeah, it's it's just good for basically everything, but it's not necessary. All right, another dead end. Just another dead end. It's fine. Uh, we should probably just scoot on out of here. We found a bunch in Brinstar. I'm sure norfair has got some other stuff. Yeah, I think that's probably the the play. It's just a. Uh, I'm just gonna do a. Uh... Yeah. Nope. That. Nope. <laughs> Controller Y. <laughs> I feel the trade. <laughs> Alright, so let's go over this way. We're gonna pop up this area and we are going to... Let's, let's use our map checks. We got a bunch of stuff to look through. Uh, do that. Ooh, yeah, interesting. We got some, some additional rooms that we've got to, to view, so we know where they are. Uh, those map checks will come in handy much, much later in runs, when you're looking for like a specific hidden item in a room that you don't know about. Mm-hmm. 
So this just kind of works in our favor to have those, those map checks available. So do we have an idea of like what our max number of like missiles and um, E-tanks are going to be, or is it just at the mercy of the, uh, the randomizer? Uh, I believe that... I don't think missiles have a hard cap. I know for, for E-tanks it's... I want to say 10. I think it's 10? I might be wrong about that. But as far as missiles are concerned, I feel like I've got enough when I've got about 100. So oh, I'm gonna grab these couple last little tanks. It's it's a solid number. It's usually if a room like a like a, a, a mother brain room has zevatites, it's only a couple of them. Mm. Uh, it's just good to have them as sort of backup. Yeah, for for a proper us clearing this, uh, I would love to have at least ice beam, and I really just ice beam is the other thing I truly need. Yeah, we're gonna Most we're gonna want ice beam to get past those metroids. <laughs> yeah, basically that we need we need that for metroids. Um, I can do infinite bomb jumping, even though it's not technically required. Hey, there's say, our boss room. I was gonna say, I don't remember infinite bomb jumping being doable in the original Metroid. It is, it. but it is very hard. Hey, space hey, jump! Hey, space jump! Do we have anything else in the vault? Ah, oh, we got an E-Tank. I'll take it. Yeah, this is a tiny vault. Uh, again, jokes on jokes. Uh, so mm. we've got... Oh, this is a wild creation. <laughs> oh. I think we need to... Yeah. Hey! Oh my god! <laughs> we got one of the joke rooms. <laughs> uh, so there are certain joke <laughs> boss rooms where you don't actually have to fight the boss. It just uh, it just ends up like defeating the boss in a different way. That's one of the ones that was from Pride. Love that. <laughs> we got our robot friend to unveil the Pride, Pride flag and take out Kraid for us. <laughs> Heck yeah. Can't think of a better way. Alright, so we got we got ourselves a down crate, which is good. Got two more bosses left. We gotta find again ice beam is really the big thing at this point. Um otherwise, the others are nice to have. We don't actually need spacer. Don't need screw attack. We don't really need high jump boots now that we've got space jump. Do um <clears throat> Are there uh, boss statues in this that you have to, you know, they have to beat bosses to clear or not? Uh, the only restriction is that you can't get open Mother Brain's room until you've defeated all the bosses. Okay. So, they couldn't do the statues thing so they didn't want to have a, a static lead up. And I get it, but, yeah, it's sort of a different kind of approach to it. Same, the same net effect of, like, you have to have them beat before you do it. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to put that with our parade. Currently in Kraid's area, but I don't want to leave until we've just checked it for everything. And then we'll probably head over to Norfair, do some exploration there, go take out Ridley, um, and then we gotta do Mother Brain. Uh, but again, Ice Beam, super important for us to get uh, if we want to get through, uh, through Torian safely. You have a nice amount of missiles right now. Hey, yeah, it's nice. You know what? I'm gonna skip this. Uh, skip this missile pack. <laughs> Just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's ruined. Uh, so we're gonna grab these missiles. Uh, just we might as well. They're here. There's no effort to, gra to grab them. I have. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm not gonna go out of my way for missile packs at this point. But if they're right there, I'm just gonna take them. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, really prolific designers for this game. Uh, people that it seems like once you once you get bit, yeah bit by the bug of making rooms, that it just keeps happening. Um, so a lot of the people that I, I, I interact with that I have the uh, map group map packs for are all people that just make a very large number of rooms. Uh, oh, we have a Ooh. we have a, a vault way. It loves the vault. Uh, it really does. There's uh, there's a couple rooms that it tends to throw in a lot of these these uh, areas. Specifically, the vaults are very popular. Um, and for, for some reason, uh, Flannel Cat made a room that just pops up in every single generation I do. Multiple times. <laughs> every time. The Four Corners. We, we saw it earlier. Yeah. Um, and then Arborelia has a room uh, that is uh, named More Corners, which is just four corners, but like stacked on top of each other at one of the corners. <laughs> More corners. Right? 
More corners. Uh, there are all total, I want to say, like, seven or eight variants of that, that room. And uh, they all just show up every time I do a generation. It likes that room structure way too much. It's an iconic room. Oh, yeah. So, like, if I left all of them in, I actually had to, I just set tags on a bunch of them so I could exclude them from generation so I didn't end up with four versions of that in this run. Face encore. <laughs> Uh, it's what I kept saying. Four Corners is an unstoppable experience. <laughs> <laughs> it is there. You cannot resist. Oh, wait. Let's just do this the right way. Drop a bomb. There you go. And nothing. Okay. We're just going to pop on out of here. Uh, we are going to do a warp back. Because I don't see any other reasons to explore this. So we're going to... Go back While this way. we are returning, can I jump in for a second here? Oh, absolutely. Of course, of course. First, I want to say to everyone that we are rounding the corner on $36,000 total raised for the National Women's Law Center. So thank you very much to everyone who has contributed to make that happen. We are also rounding the corner on $1,250 out of $1,500 total raised for that two-for-one Taco Tuesday incentive for Waluigi's Taco Stand. So both thirty-six k and some extra tacos, I think I see a match made in heaven. I also, since we have just recently celebrated uh, Pride's victory over Crade, I have a special <laughs> donation here. $25 from Kaishi, who says, my best friend's partner of 10 years proposed to her today. She said, yes. I'm so happy for them. Congratulations, Otter and Fox. That's incredible. Yay. <laughs> so good to hear. Uh, yeah, so at this point now we're sort of back to back through criteria. So if you've got any more, we can keep going with them. Absolutely, we can keep going through it. And in addition to that two for one Taco Tuesday, we also still have the bid wars open for mail time, uh, as well as an incentive open for mail time that we are still sitting underneath a hundred dollars for to deliver Max's hat. So we've got a lot of things you can send your donations towards across this amazing day of runs. Be sure you are clicking those incentives when you donate. We want to see as much Frost Fatales as possible. I have here uh, $6 from B and Ivy. He says, hi again. Let's see if I actually do the incentive right. Let's go again. Perfect mm -hmm. encapsulation. I also have $10 here from Lady Tauhi with no comment, but thank you so much for that generous donation. As well as $25 from Pendle Steven, who says, I'm going to sleep, so maybe I will be awake for WarioWare. <laughs> or not. Whatever. Good luck. <laughs> That's delightful. Right, so we've been our way our way back to Norfair. Uh, we're gonna do some more exploration in this area. Um, oh, it's this room. There's nothing useful in that, so we're not gonna go through all the hassle it is fighting everything. We're just gonna skip on by it. There's a Metroid waving hi to you on the other side of that uh, blue thingy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh hey, the magnet core. Always a good core. Um, great for pulling stuff in from a distance. Basically, all all pickups will be drawn to you. Not the static ones for like power ups or anything, but like any of the health drops or missile drops. Mm. Quite nice to find, usually early on. If I didn't have Surge Core, I would swap over to it. Yeah. Oh, little seahorse guys are here. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I forget what their names are. I it it evades me. I should know this because they're the same in in Super Metroid. Oh, the core capacitor. That's a really oh. cool thing to find. Cool. So our cool our core capacitor lets us equip two HS cores or two uh two cores. So <laughs> we now do surge and uh, magnet. Yeah, so it's, so it's, some... it's just me manifesting the fact that I really want HS core right now. We got some uh, North so much safer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Metroids. Hi, Metroids. Oh, they got like a <laughs> disco light in there. They're having a dance party. They're having fun. <laughs> We're just gonna leave them behind that glass because I, I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> the more corners. Oh boy, more corners. More corners. 
This is, like I said, if I didn't turn off those other variants, we would see all of them. Uh, the generator <laughs> loves this room. I don't know why. But it is, it is well, it's a fantastic room, that's why. Fantastic concept made by a, fa a uh, fantastic friend. Uh, oh, hey, a spring ball check that leads us straight back into more corners, and I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> because why not? More corners! <laughs> more corners! <laughs> you can always have more corners. I'm trying to remember where the actual items are in this, because they're they're spread out a little bit differently, and I want to check them before I move on. Hey! Hey, Ooh. a spacer! Definitely not the wide beam. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> uh, so let's check over here. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of me just, like, choosing random directions to go. Hey! Hot hey, drinks! Hot drinks, <laughs> hot drinks containing our ice beam. <laughs> ice beam was in hot drinks. Ice beam was hot in hot drinks, drinks the whole time. <laughs> You know, you know how like when you get a um, when you get like a, a like a hot chocolate or something that's like way too hot to drink, and you put like a single ice cube in it because you can't be patient and wait thirty seconds for it to cool off. That's exactly oh, yeah, what yeah. we're dealing with right there. <laughs> One hundred percent. That is me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check this top corner. I think we're we're pretty much we're not. We're technically go mode at this point. I think we're... Yeah, the only thing we're missing is high jump. Um, so I just gotta find the bosses. Uh, again, variability in this uh, sometimes takes a bit longer. Um, I'm still gonna just do a, a bit of exploration, just kind of sure up my uh, collection of items, make sure I've got everything I need. Um, I would like to find high jump, but it's not a top priority, as it were. Another E-Tank. Yeah, we're, we're definitely good on health and good on missiles for, for a while. And now we're well, fine, Ridley. Well, we're not afraid of Metroids anymore. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Metroids are going to have uh, so much fun. <laughs> hey, I jump. <laughs> oh, there we go. You got your, yeah, your fresh kicks. Yeah, just stacked on top of each other. So now we got to find the bosses. That's basically where we're at. Uh, we are... Yeah, gonna look for them. See what I might have missed. Uh, okay, so let's go down here and see if the boss is maybe down this direction. Oh, nope. Really? Can we perhaps ring in go mode or the threat of go mode with a couple more donations? Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, we have $25 here from Edward Malice, who says, Great runs, entertaining commentary, cool games I've never seen before. This has been a great day of Frost Fatales. And first of all, thank you. And second of all, I agree. And third of all, we want to keep extending it for you. We want to see more games, more incentives, and of course, the Wah Tiles Takeover. That was a so-so wah. You know what I meant. <laughs> uh, so please keep wah. those donations coming in so that we all can have a hearty wah together. There it is. <laughs> I also have $25 here from Leprechaun Gangster, who says, as a law-talking gal myself, I love the work National Women's Law Center does. Also, less than three, you gray. Oh, uh, that is my partner, and she is amazing. <laughs> well, I hope nobody blinked, because they would have missed Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ridley, as I mentioned before, Ridley in this game is very, very, very weak. Uh, he is so much weaker than Kraid. Like, Kraid can block your shots. Ridley just, just takes it. He just doesn't even try. Just hops around with that little goofy smile on his face. <laughs> yep, just like, yay! That's catharsis. There you go. <laughs> Unnecessary, but you know. Dance party's over. Hmm, pop and flop room. I have no, I don't think I've ever seen this before. I like the colors. Hmm. Yeah. 
I am also on the lookout for the last Fatal's room that I built. Uh, I'm sure it's here somewhere, it's just finding it. But I don't think it can show up in Norcar. I think it shows up in... Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's fine. Yeah, we'll find it. We'll find it. We'll find it somewhere. Everything's somewhere, right? I like how, the, um, unlike in the original Metroid, your your aside from long beam, your waves or your beams didn't really like stack together. You either had long ice or long uh, wave, but in this one, all of our beams work together, like in uh, Super Metroid. Yes, that is one of the uh, absolute best things that I built into it. Was this lovely menu over here where we can turn on and off equipment? Um, anyone who's familiar with the original Metroid, if you end up picking up the wrong beam at the wrong time, it can completely mess up the run. You have to go and collect the other beam again and bring it back. It's yeah, it's a problem. Now, now you're firing icy double helixes. <laughs> oh yeah, and they're great. They just they do a lot of. They actually do have increased damage as well. So if you stack ice and beam. And you've got the two hits from Space, or it's just increased damage all around. Nice. So it makes it you can actually do this where you're fighting with Ice Beam on and it's not slowing everything to a halt. Yeah, in uh, the original Metroid, a lot of times you're. If you wanted to deal damage to things, you used missiles, otherwise, you were just kind of avoiding everything that came at you. <laughs> yep, because uh, Ice Beam just froze. It was basically a one hit freeze, and I think it doesn't take damage the second shot. No, yeah, so the second shot just like just, freezes. Yeah, it just unfreezes, so you'd have to, like, shoot twice for the same amount of damage. It was actually a damage downgrade. Uh, freeze is nice, though. Freeze is a really cool, fun thing, but, like... <laughs> okay, where am I going? Um... That's a Praetorian. Um... Do it. Check a couple little things real quick. Because we can. Because we can. Gotta... Uh, yeah, we're gonna check off the, the other four corners. Okay, oh, yeah, back to four corners. Back to four corners! <laughs> four corners, best corners. <laughs> the, um... Seems like the, uh... <clears throat> the, uh, the creators are pretty generous with putting enemies in the rooms, too. They don't feel as, uh... empty as they do in the original Metroid. Oh, yeah. There are some of them that that is a, uh... Uh, a wonderful thing, and some of them where it's a detriment. Ah! <laughs> nice. Fun little pride room there. Again, a lot of the rooms from this uh, this uh, collection come from a uh, separate marathon that was based on uh, a Power of Pride, so... I have a bunch of the, the rooms that were built for that marathon in this pack. All fantastic. Alright, we got an elevator to... Elevator to wreck ship. Ooh, there's wreck ship in this. We can, we haven't touched the button here. Wreck ship. We <laughs> we have everything. What what could be in wreck ship? This isn't a bit, by the way. I have no idea why this is here. <laughs> could find anything in wreck ship. <laughs> you you can you can, it's like Zombocom. You can find anything in wreck ship. <laughs> I have a feeling that your screw attack's in here. It's very possible. I mean, I would like to find screw attack. That would be fun to have. Uh, and I think we we get, we got we have time to look for it for a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna do that while we go on the hunt for screw attack. May I jump in for a moment? Uh, absolutely. First of all, just a quick update that we have crossed $35,800. We are right there for 36 k and I know, chat, that I believe in all of you. We can hit that by the end of the run. I also would love to call out that we've had a new incentive open up. Mix and match to your heart's desire. We have just opened up the Smooshy Cosplay Incentive for our run of Smooshy Come Home a little bit later on in the evening. We are really throwing the kitchen sink at you here. We got cosplays, we've got deliveries, we've got a bid war where all of the options right now for names submitted for mail time are various forms of taco, but I don't <laughs> think that's cursed <laughs> enough and I think we can do better, chat. So start, fire up those thinking caps. Um, 
We want to make the experience here something rewarding for all of us, and maybe just a little bit cursed. That's been the vibe. Um, I also, to that end, have a generous $50 donation from Anonymous, no comment, but every little bit helps. Every little bit is going to an amazing cause and helps us further those astounding incentives. <laughs> those little guys go! <laughs> yep, this is uh, actually based on, on mods that were in Super Metroid. These little robot guys! Aren't they adorable? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just funny little guys. They move a lot more in this one. They, they move a lot more in this one than they do in Super Metroid. In Super Metroid, they just kind of like pick up the pace a little. They don't really like move when you hit them. <laughs> uh, more missiles. Yeah, no, like it's honestly, I like these better. If they moved like this in Super Metroid, I would, I would not mind those robots so much. Yeah, there's that one room on the other side of the attic where you have to push the robots for a check that's oh. going to be nothing. <laughs> yup. And you have to do it. You can't just not do the check. It, it has to be done. It's so out of the way. If you have to double back for it, you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you skip it and you need to do it, you're you're never going to forgive yourself for it. It just takes so long to get to. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to skip the end of this area, then we'll warp back, and then I think we are going to head on over to Torian. Just do a couple little more checks here. <laughs> more missiles! Who doesn't love missiles? <laughs> you're going to end this You're gonna end this run with 200 missiles? <laughs> it's entirely possible. We can go for it. I think, yeah, stretch goal, get as many missiles as possible. <laughs> get all the missiles. I'd say I'd say 100% run, but there's no way I could finish that on time. Yeah. <laughs> I I love it. I love it with the uh, the core the core you have that's drawing in the uh, the health and uh, missile regenerations. Because like when you when you get one and you pass it, it chases after you. Like, hey, you forgot me. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, magnet core is incredibly useful, and it's just it's kind of cool. It's like that kind of. Get a little ingenuity there with the, the way they design things. Oh! Oh! DK Yay! says trans rights! Trans rights! <laughs> Thanks, DK. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, DK. Almost. We, you know, we are, we're four missile packs away from 200. <laughs> uh, I think that, that covers anything meaningful that would have been in wrecked ship, so we're gonna just do a... back to respawn, and we are gonna head over to Torian. So, um, do, after you beat Mother Brain, does it, um, will it still, will you still see new rooms on the escape? Yes. Uh, so that, one of the, one of the things about this game is it tries to, so it builds a randomized escape sequence, so rather than putting us just in one room that we've got to jump out of, which anyone can do, uh, it builds out a fully randomized escape sequence that, uh, is a bunch of different rooms. Um, and it will just, it'll randomly put stuff in there. That must be interesting for it to, like, f like, uh, do... How does it know it's not going to give you, like, a an escape that is uncompletable? Just by distance uh, of rooms? Or? It, it, it doesn't check... Oh, it doesn't check your items, but it builds that before you do the escape. Gotcha, gotcha. So, if you don't have the stuff to do escape, you don't get to end it there. You have to go and find the item. Oh, I see, I see. So yeah, if you do fail escape, what it'll do is it'll drop you uh, right back at the respawn for Torian. And uh, it'll keep everything the way it was, but you just can go back there and, and do the fight again. Gotcha. So, respawn's mother brain. It's the only time where it basically removes some progress so that you can go back and do the thing you should have done. Uh, there are more than a few times I've completed these seeds without actually doing all the things I was supposed to do. Uh, oh, Torian's over that way. Where am I going? Where am I going? Actually, since you brought up the uh, escape four corners, since you brought up uh, escape sequence, I have a donation here with a question from uh, the donor. If you got a second, oh, absolutely. I have a 
generous $125 donation from the Batmeister, thank you so much, who says, Donating during the Metroid Planets run, as a diehard super fan, this looks fascinating. Not sure how or if this applies, but save the animals? I wish. I wish so much that this had to save the animals, but it, unfortunately it doesn't. Uh, and I am deeply disappointed by it. Um, it's a thing I, I, I think a lot of people would appreciate, but in the spirit of the original Metroid, they, they did not add an animals, save the animals section, which is unfortunate. So to be clear, it's just that there are no animals. It's not that the creators of this have decided that uh, save the frames is the only option. Oh, no, no, it's not like there's a little window where you can see the animals that can't help them. Like, they're not they're not going for taunt there. Uh, it's just that there's just no there's just no animals to save, unfortunately. Ah, get off. Metroids, get off. <laughs> there were no animals in the original Metroid, hence there are no animals in Metroid planets. It's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, if the animals were already on Zebus... <laughs> before Super Metroid. It's, theor it's theoretically possible they were there for the first game, you just didn't see them. Because the planet well, doesn't explode the first time. Yeah, you just... The, the explosion you caused from, uh... Just blew up Turian, didn't blow up all the planets. So the, wherever the animals are, they are already saved, awaiting for us to save them again when we go to destroy the entire planet in Super Metroid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not like we're the ones causing the... Uh, okay, we are causing the planet to explode. Oh, hey, it's Mother Brain! All right. Yeah. Hey, look at the mother brain. That's uh. Okay, so in order to kill the mother brain, we've got to use zepatite. Uh, we have to take care of these zepatites. Because without that, we can't actually damage mother brain. And now we got this. Pull that up. And that is one beat up mother brain. All right. Let's see if we can escape. Get out fast. I think we're good. Oh, it's a four minute escape sequence. All right. So that means a pretty long escape sequence. Uh, based on the number of screens between where Mother Brain is and the end, um, it determines the amount of time it gives you. Okay. So we've, it shouldn't take us the four minutes, but you know. It's conceived. Oh, ah, stop it. That's what's <laughs> being mean. Heck off. Provided we don't get stuck in Metroids the entire time. <laughs> there we go. Metroid's done. Metroid's end. Oh, oh, God, get away. Get away. Get away. <laughs> I don't have time for you. That was a jump scare Metroid. That one got me. I will say, when I was a kid, Metroids were the scariest thing in any game. Right? And like, now, now that I'm an adult and I look back on it, it's just like, oh, no, they weren't anything to worry about. But like... They feel scary. They have this air about them of like, oh, this thing is absolutely going to beat you up. Yeah. Like it's going to beat you up. It's yeah. going to take your lunch money. It's going to not feel bad about it. <laughs> okay, so we got three minutes. There's probably some more. Really? Is this just going to be Metroid? This it's, <laughs> it's Metroid's all the way down. Yep, Metroid's all the way down. <laughs> Metroids are stalling on Frost Fatale's behalf. <laughs> For instance, we are, just, we are just $20 away from crossing that 36,000 mark, which also represents our progress towards the overall milestone, of course, at 40,000 with the WAH Tals takeover. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to cross 36K before the escape sequence is over. That should be a shoe in but let's see how high we can get while the Metroids stall on our behalf here, shall we, chat? <laughs> Keeping the dream alive. I know this room. How do I know this room? Hey, hey there's a spider. There's a spider. A spider's being a spider. <laughs> spider guy. Oh, oh no. Oh! Oh no! Oh! Oh! oh one of the big jumpers! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! This room got really hectic really fast. <laughs> got super intense, just like out of nowhere. <laughs> and now we see why it was four minutes. <laughs> Alright, so I think we're, we're probably near the end here. I'm gonna guess that like we got maybe a couple rooms left, if that. 
More Metroids. More Cheerios. More Metroids! <laughs> so many Metroids! I will say, one of the other fun things about this particular game is, unlike the original, there is not a huge... There's, there's a... The, the capacity for much larger rooms. Um, the original Metroid had a pretty, pretty low capacity for making large areas. Um, and this is just infinitely larger than that. No, finitely larger than that, but still much larger. So you can see some of those, like, very large, sprawling rooms. They kind of feel like, oh, really? More oh. Metroid? <laughs> I just sworn we've seen this room already. I was gonna say, this looks familiar. <laughs> I miss there being like a more <clears throat> more challenging stuff in here, like uh, forcing you to use spring balls, forcing you to use um, use space jump, that kind of stuff. Okay, uh. Less than a minute. Just a morph check for Torian. Um. <laughs> Metroid's doing okay. us all a solid, solid. We have hit $36,000 raised for the National Women's Law Center. Thank you so much, everyone, for hopping yeah. on that. That was an enemy right. frozen in a very terrible area <laughs> where I <laughs> yep. almost got stuck. Freeze ray kind of betrayed you there. Oh, no. We're running There's a little the elevator. time. Oh! There's the elevator! 16 seconds left. And we're left. done next time. <laughs> that, was, that was way closer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I did. I kind of dawdled you know, taking care of the Metroids and all that, but that was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Now oh, we get to see your progress. Yeah, there's a fun little, fun little thing at the end. They built this feature in that allows you to follow your progress through the entire run. So we can see how often we doubled back, what where we went first, how it sort of worked out. Like, you can see the times for this first one. Uh, there'll be times where it sort of slows down, where you're just looking for stuff, can't find anything, and then you'll get, like, mass progress. <laughs> yeah, Spore Spawn, you can see there's a little stop there just because of how long it takes to fight Spore Spawn. Yeah. Yeah, all in all, uh, really solid run. Um, I Can I get the, my final time? Uh, what was that? Absolutely, it looks like the final time was 1.04.53. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that quick. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the timer, the in-game timer isn't really an accurate gauge of time for RTA. But yeah, that uh, that run went incredibly quickly. We had a bunch of stuff stacked on top of each other, which kind of sped it up. So but yeah, um, really happy with how that ran. GG, that was great. Welcome back to the prize block of Frost Fatales 2024. I am Swiftaloo, and I am joined by a mushroom who looks like Frozen Flygon. We have a mushroom block coming up next. What can I say? I know. I'm so excited for who she comes home. And mail time. I'm sure they will be amazing runs. And thank you so much as well to Grey Goo Girl for that amazing Metroid Planets run. Yes. You ready to talk about some prizes? Oh, yes. What do you want All to talk right. about first? So first up, we have these limited Nintendo buddies. They are not in studio at the moment, but you can see them on the website if you go to gamesdonequick.com slash prizes. They include a little eh, or link um, lamination as well as N with Musharna. I love Aww. N. I love Pokemon. <laughs> um, as well as Red with Charmander and Dratini. All super, super cute. Definitely be sure to check them out. The whole set, $10 I know. minimum donation. That's yes, awesome. Yes, only $10. Thank you, Lancetti7, for sending those in. Um, truly appreciated. Up next, we have a Waluigi's Taco oh Stand Cross Stitch. Now, I know a lot of people are excited about Waluigi's Taco Stand. Unfortunately, we also do not have this in studio, but Eliza sent that in, and it's another $10 minimum donation. Thank you so it much, Eliza. So it is so cool looking. Seeing cross stitches are always so amazing because some of the details that you can make. I mean, I've done some needle work and stuff. It's just incredible. Yeah, Absolutely Eliza incredible. has sent in some amazing cross stitches for us before, and this one is no exception. And for another $10 minimum donation, we have these cat and Anna magnets from Kind of Nerdy yes. Housewives. 
Kind of Nerdy Housewife always loves to send us in some really unique Perler, one, Perler prizes that are, you know, usable in other ways. So stick them right on your fridge. And I had Warrior Wear for the Wii. And Kat Nina's game was one of my favorites. Oh, <laughs> love them so much. So thank you so much for these adorable Perlers. We're going to be seeing Warrior Wear later today. Yes, we will. And on top of, on the topic of Warrior Wear, we have this lovely Warrior Wear cross stitch that was sent in by Paticus, which is actually one of the runners yes. of the game that's for this event. You have Wario who's holding the Joy-Cons above his head, doing the same kind of oh. position pose that um, he does in Wario where- I just thought, moving. I thought he was just angry. I, it I kind of looks like that. <laughs> it kind of looks like that with, um, with the little arm, but it's no, it's actually Joy-Cons and it's, it's just so, so precious. It is super, super nice. Another $10 minimum donation. Yeah, so we just had the run of Metroid Planet. Yes. We have this stunning Ridley art print. The colors on this are so vibrant. We've kind yes. of had a little Fatal's vibe going here. Yeah. With the purple and the yellow. Megan Russell did an amazing job with this print. Just the colors are so vibrant. The shading. It's I absolutely love it. Beautiful. I love all the details that are in this, um, especially just, again, the little details with the shading and stuff on um, Ridley um, oh, himself. It's beautiful. Wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. And from Puzzle P, the second you look at this, you're going to know yes. from the pattern on this. We got a Dale and Chip painting here. So adorable. We had that co-op run earlier. We did. The, we had that run earlier. Yeah, we did, have the, run. we did have the run earlier. <laughs> um, super, super cute. You can see all the little details in yes. the background here. Um, Puzzle P is known for... You know, filling the I background. see the word. I see Dale yeah. hidden in there. There's I see Puzzle brother. P's signature. So cute. I know. I love it so much. And hey, if you like Chip and Dale, you know, if you ever wanted to play that game that was on earlier, we have also a custom Faith NES controller. Oh my it is so cute. It has Faith on it. And listen, I mean, you put Faith on anything. At that I detail. need it. You yeah. need it. Just just look at that. It's, it's so <laughs> cute and I mean it's an actual functional NES controller too so you can use this to play the Chip and Dale game that was uh, that earlier. That is so cool. It's I a, love so much. I know. And it was sent in to us by Tozel, one of our hosts for the marathon. Yes, yes. This is so great. Thank you so much Tozel for sending that in to us. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who has sent in prizes for the event from the Vitalis community, from the speedrunning community in general and we have one special prize we have to talk about. Yes. We have our grand prize which is the Hollow Knight Queen's oh. Gardens Respite miniature sent in by Sky Berkson. It is a $200 donation. However, that's a cumulative donation. Yes. So you send in, you know, maybe $10 to enter yourself for almost all these prizes or maybe even $25 to enter for all these prizes that we just showed. You know, put it in that and that adds up and then put in another $25 maybe throughout the week and you start adding up more and more. And eventually, you'll be able to get the prize. Yeah, the $200 absolutely. Prize. So. It's Incredible. So check out it. the full album of the process. You can see yes. more pictures of it. Go to gamesoquick.com slash prizes. Check yes. it out. And while you're there at gamesoquick.com, you can look at the schedule of our upcoming run. Yes. Like we got Mushroom Block and up next. If you liked any of these prizes, feel free to donate, as well as checking off any incentives that are currently not met. Don't go to gamesdonequick.com slash donate. And be sure to tick off boxes for incentives so that they can get met and be seen throughout the run. Yeah, the our, runners, our runners have prepared just so much so much amazing stuff for us to see. We want to see more from our runners, more for yes. calls, more speed running. So get your donations in now for these wonderful prizes, for our incentives, and for the National Women's Law Center, why we're all here. Yes. We're doing incredible work. And thank you so much to everyone who has donated and who's going to donate throughout the week. We're getting to make a difference through gaming, and I think that's just amazing. It is. But with that... I think it's time to get back to some more gaming. Oh, so, yes. I hope you all are ready for Mushroom <laughs> Blog because we are. Yeah. We'll catch you next time here at Frost Hotels 2024.